already many people here. Thanks for coming. I will shortly introduce our speaker of today, Michael Pucher. He's a senior researcher at the Austrian Research Institute for Artificial Intelligence and senior speech technologist at Recognosco in Vienna. Uh, he obtained his doctorate degree in electrical and information engineering in Graz University of Technology in 2007 and later also received his Venia Docendi in speech communication there. And his research interests include acoustic modeling for speech recognition, semantic language modeling, speech synthesis for language varieties, multimodal and spoken dialogue systems, audiovisual speech synthesis, and synthesis of singing, and also animal vocalizations, uh, digital phonetics and sociophonetics. Um, but everything else, and in more detail, he will explain to you right now. So I will hand the stage to him for the next about around 40 minutes. And uh, after that, we will have a short Q&A. So welcome, Michael Rucker. Thank you, Lawrence, for introduction. Yes, these uh, were really many topics. So <laughs> I, uh, today, uh, I think we can a little bit concentrated on uh, yeah more uh, a smaller small amount of topics um, and I would like to talk about synthesizing uh, different um, signals or uh, yeah different phenomena namely dialects faces singing voices songbirds and uh, famous dead actors of course the uh, Famous dead actor could also be more prosaically synthesizing from uh, audiobook data, but that uh, was also what we did in one of the projects, show, which I will show you. Uh, so first, I would like to uh, introduce uh, speech synthesis and uh, some uh, topics around it and then um, discuss the deep neural network based synthesis that we have used recently and then uh, the which we were, were also using for synthesizing this audiobook data and then i also want to introduce hidden markov model based synthesis which is not used so much today but uh, a lot of our um, more uh, not so recent uh, results are based on this and uh, the HMM based synthesis was also uh, so a precursor of the DNN methods and uh, and then also our work on speech synthesis of language varieties mainly uh, Viennese dialects but this could also be applied to other varieties. And, and this was also a really cool project that we had also together with Öfai, uh, where we were recording Viennese uh, speakers. Uh, and then we also did work on audiovisual speech synthesis and singing synthesis, and finally the synthesis of bird songs, and uh, also maybe some ethical questions that come up with some of these technologies. So uh, this is uh, one possibility to see the, the state of the art. Uh, so what we have to solve in uh, speech synthesis is uh, yeah, the intelligibility, the first problem that the speech is understandable so that you can decode the text from the signal. And this was actually already solved very early with the Typhon-based methods or also Forman synthesis. And then uh, naturalness uh, is also uh, a topic which could, you could say was partly solved by unit selection-based synthesis. And then also flexibility and also a, a, an increase in naturalness then came with the parametric methods based uh, mainly HMM and now also deep neural networks. And then I would say this conversational speech synthesis uh, 
where we really want to synthesize uh, any kind of uh, speech that uh, fits a certain situation is still unsolved. So I think that we have the uh, so the, the synthesizers can produce all these things, I would say, but uh, how to control it is uh, still um, something that's difficult. So how do have the so we have the control model, but how to control it in the uh, specific situation? And there are many applications, uh, yeah, like these web readers. And we have also, also coming out of this project that we did on Viennese dialects, uh, built uh, the first uh, synthetic voice in Austrian German. And this is also used by the website of the city of Vienna. And this voice is actually also used by uh, blind people uh, for screen readers, for blind users. And then we also have yeah, traffic information systems. And then spoken dialogue systems, uh, which we, we all know, like the, the echo to the home and so on. And, and then also multimodal dialogue systems, where we also have some additional modality. So uh, also with Siri would be a personal digital assistant that also is kind of multimodal. And then, yeah, virtual reality computer games. And they also added this digital afterlife industry, which is uh, something very recent with, uh, in the context of voice cloning. And yes, this is a, um, so some thoughts maybe on speech synthesis and AI and complexity. So there is this, uh, concept AI complete, which you could define as uh, a, a problem that is uh, as com complex as all other uh, AI complete problems. So defined in analogy to NP completeness, but of course for NP completeness, we know uh, how to solve NP complete problems, but we don't yet know how to solve the AI complete problem, which we could say is maybe natural language understanding or image understanding. And I think if you think of this uh, generating natural speech output, as I uh, described it before, it's also probably AI complete when you really want to have the correct uh, rendering at each situation. Because yeah, you need quite, you need to know uh, what is the situation. You need to know the context, and then you need to uh, synthesize. So it's quite complex. And yeah, speech synthesis itself is uh, uh, still um, a little bit uh, vague. The term, so we we could mean with it something like concept to speech synthesis. So, for example, if we start from a higher level semantic representation, if we say, for example, create a friendly goodbye to a friend in Viennese dialect, and then the computer says Baba, for example, would be yeah, starting from a very high level description. Or some other uh, speech synthesis would be from brain signals, which was also some uh, thing, a field where recently there was also some progress that people uh, were able to synthesize the speech from some recorded brain signals. So either from speech production or also from thought speech production. And But in our work it's always in the context of text to speech synthesis. So we generate speech from text input and this also has uh, yeah, pragmatic reasons because this uh, parallel text speech corpora that we need for training are relatively easy to collect. I mean, it's still quite expensive to collect the data, but compared to this other type of uh, signals, it's uh, yeah, easy. And then, of course, 
text as input uh, nowadays is also available yeah massively everywhere we have text everywhere and this text can then be rendered by the uh, synthesizer and so this text to speech synthesis uh, system can then be described uh, yeah in these four different uh, system blocks so to say so we have this text normalization where we do uh, numbers and abbreviation and all these things and uh, make it more text-like and then the graphem to phoneme conversion and uh, acoustic modeling so here we can have uh, the concatenative like unit selection speech synthesis or the parametric methods with HMM and DNN and or hybrid systems also and then we have waveform generation, also again concatenative uh, unit selection or classical vocoder, which would be uh, yeah, uh, the, so to say, uh, black box that uh, uh, gets the uh, features and uh, creates the waveform, or uh, the the newer development of the DNN-based neural vocoder. That also starts from <coughs> representation, uh, yeah, speech rep uh, feature representation, and uh, generates the waveform. And yeah, here we have um, uh, collected uh, some uh, data on the on the history of uh, speech synthesis in the from in the twenties and beginning of twenty first century because we were organizing the speech synthesis workshop in 2019 in Vienna and this workshop is uh, is held since 1990 and so we were looking at the terms that were appearing in the papers that were published in this workshop and you really see nicely so we have this unit selection here hidden Markov model and neural networks how the different paradigms uh, <laughs> have taken over over time so we see here the the unit selection until uh, yeah 2010 and then this uh, hmm and and then in really in 2019 when we held the workshop uh, really everything was about uh, neural networks and you can also see that there was already some work on neural networks in the 1990 but this was mainly on the uh, symbolic side not on the acoustic modeling or on the vocoder and we can also see that uh, so it's very uh, mono monotopic <laughs> it's because here in the in these times you still had a lot of concepts that were investigated and now it's uh, yeah the moment everyone is doing the neural networks i don't the the workshop will be held again this year in france so let's see how it's how it will look this year and yeah and here this is an overview of uh statistical uh, parametric speech synthesis which i took from this uh nice survey uh and so we have this different uh levels the text linguistic features acoustic features and waveform and we would have this yeah end-to-end -end approaches also that go directly from the character uh, representation to the waveform and but what i will uh, present here are these hmm based uh, uh, statistical parametric speech synthesis systems so where we we go from the character to some linguistic feature and then do some uh, spectral representation, so male frequency capsule coefficients or something like that. And then we have this classical vocoder, these two, thread and world, uh, yeah, classical uh, vocoders and generate the waveform. And the other ones are this uh, tachotron here and the fast speech, which we have used recently, and they also uh, work on the phoneme level and then uh, they generate a male spectrogram 
And from this male spectrogram, then uh, some neural vocoder, in our case, it's this hi-fi gun vocoder that we were using, uh, is then used to generate the waveform. So, yes, that's, uh, we are using this hi-fi gun vocoder, so this is not, uh, was not invented by us. Uh, it's a general adversarial network, so you have a, a generator and a discriminator, and the training is uh, like yeah, done between this generator and discriminator. And there are different ideas here. Uh, so included in the generator, this multi-receptive field and the multi-scale and multi-period uh, discriminator, and then also different loss functions. Uh, yeah, a gun loss, then a male spectrogram loss, and a feature matching loss. And this is then uh, used to, so it's then trained. So first you have to train it on uh, a lot of audio data. And then you have, yeah, depending of course on your training data, you have a general uh, purpose vocoder or more restricted vocoder depending on your training data. And uh, the first system that we used is this Tacotron 2, uh, presented in uh, 2018. And it, yeah, it has this input text and, and uh, it's not end-to-end, uh, -end, so it, it generates this male spectrogram from the input text. And from this spectrogram, you then still have the vocoder. Uh, so here they have a WaveNet, so we have, we have this HiFi gun vocoder. And, uh, and yeah, we have some embedding of the input text and, and also yeah, LSDMs here and, and this attention mechanism that was uh, first used for this uh, Tacodron in speech synthesis. Uh, and it actually was invented for machine translation. So I think that was, that was used uh, the first time and then also in other speech domains. And yes, I want to play you a few samples that uh, we have developed based on our this Austrian, German and Viennese data uh, from uh, in this Takotron 2 uh, architecture. And the voices are also on this website, so you can try it out there. And we have uh, yeah, we have a speaker-dependent voice and then also these adapted voices. So the speaker-dependent voice means that it, the, the training is only on done with the data of this speaker and the adapted voice is there is some background model also from which the, uh, the thing is then adapted. So. So this is the uh, the first uh, speaker dependent uh, voice. Das geht ja schon ganz gut mit der Sprachsynthese. So this is our uh, Austrian German speaker, and this is now the the same speaker but with the adapted system. Yeah. Das geht ja schon ganz gut mit der Sprachsynthese. So, yeah, yeah, you can hear several things here. Uh, and then we have the, our actually Viennese speaker, but because of the uh, rendering here, it's more, it's a little bit closer to the standard. Das geht ja schon ganz gut mit der Sprachsynthese. And then we have also a, a, what we called Viennese youth language, uh, a, a younger female speaker. Das geht ja schon ganz gut mit der Sprachsynthese. Uh, so, uh, uh, and the, the next architecture that we uh, were using and which we are also investigating now uh, in the context also of dialect modeling uh, so we are investigating uh, so speak embedding and dialect and 
language embedding, uh, how to use it uh, in this architecture is this fast speech and and here uh, so that the difference is that it uses uh, also this attention mechanism but only this uh, self-attention so it's based on this uh, transformer architecture so at least this uh, this part here and then it also includes an external uh, duration model because this is also something that we have seen with the Dacotron, for example, that it can become instable, so uh, then it doesn't find a, a, an endpoint or something, and the, the synthesizer uh, talks for a quite long time. And by incorporating this yeah, stable uh, duration model, uh, yeah, you, you get a more stable uh, synthesizer. And this was then uh, also used for uh, synthesizing uh, this uh, data from the actor uh, on, uh, based on audiobook data. So we, we got some audiobook data that was read by him. And this voice was then developed for a theater play in, uh, at Burgtheater. And there, the voice was then used uh, within the play, but there were also uh, human actors. Uh, but yes, the, the topic of the play was also about the voice and uh, how is it to uh, become a voice. And here I can play you this again. So this is the, the, the speaker dependent. Uh, geht ja schon ganz gut mit der and this one is the, uh, this was the Takotron and this is the fast speech. Das geht ja schon ganz gut mit der oh, and, and, uh, and then I also have a, a, a poem uh, synthesized, also with the with this Takotron voice. Meine Ruhe ist hin. Mein Herz ist schwer. Ich finde sie nimmer und nimmer mehr. Wo ich ihn nicht hab, ist mir das Grab. Die ganze Welt ist mir vergelt. Mein armer Kopf ist mir verrückt. Mein armer Sinn ist mir zerstückt. So, uh, yes, actually, you can hear that with the with the staccato voice, if it works, then it sounds more natural, kind of the the prosody and the the fast speech synthesis, since it is also adapted, uh, is then it loses a little bit of the uh, speaker similarity, and but the quality is quite good. Uh, uh, yeah, and it, since it was trained from this uh, audiobook data, which is not, of course, optimal for speech synthesis. So the other corpora that we had uh, were, of course, uh, better suited because we we were able to uh, look for the uh, phonetic uh, for the phone statistics and so on. So. Uh, and then I also want to uh, show you uh, also as a comparison the uh, HMM-based modeling because these models were trained on the same data as the uh, these Takotron models shown uh, played before. And the HMM is uh, yeah uses this uh, this classical vocoder, so the, uh, a vocoder that is not trained. So. Uh, uh, source filter, a mixed excitation vocoder, and the uh, model that is trained is also an HMM with, uh, with decision trees, basically. And let me play you. So this is again uh, the speaker dependent. 
Das geht ja schon ganz gut mit der Sprachsynthese. So, yeah, I think you can hear that there are quite some, I mean, you can hear the, the vocoder. The vocoder is not so nice and there are also other uh, maybe... Das geht ja schon ganz gut mit der Sprachsynthese. This is the Viennese speaker. Das geht ja schon ganz gut mit der Sprachsynthese. Which is a little bit more uh, dialectal and the, the use voice. Das geht ja schon ganz gut mit der Sprachsynthese. <lacht> So this was the uh, HMM-based synthesis, uh, and you see, yeah, or you hear that with the same data, basically, uh, you can get much better results with the DNM-based models. I mean, this was shown quite often already, and and here you see the basic of this HMM-based synthesis is the the decision tree. So it trains such a decision tree for all features, so for the fundamental frequency and here for the spectral features. And here it's interesting because we had, for example, this model for the Viennese speaker and we introduced this question here, if you can see this is Viennese dialect. And you see then that the model actually trains a separate subtree for non Viennese dialect uh, vowels, because here this is the vowel question, and here then it trains a subtree for the Viennese vowels, so it uh, kind of makes uh, sense also to interpret these uh, decision trees sometimes. Uh, and then what we did uh, based on these um, HMM-based models is this unsupervised interpolation because we were interested in uh, having such a gradual interpolation between standard and dialect because this is, uh, yeah, it's actually uh, how how we speak, kind of. We, we have this uh, gradual uh, states, this code switching, uh, but also in a... Uh, kind of gradual way and so we have when we we develop this algorithm when we have two models so we have here the the states of the uh, Viennese model so mir san lustige and and here the states of the standard wir sind lustige and then we just find the best path here and and then we also uh, we we know actually which states are to be interpolated, uh, so which spectral and fundamental frequency. And then we also have the duration model of the two. And with the duration model, we then compute which states we should throw away. Because, yeah, because you always have differences between uh, durations between the speakers. And this you have to take into account and uh, I also have some samples here. So in this project, we had then uh, additional uh, dialects from uh, Austria. We had this Innerfilgratten dialect, which is in East Tyrol and this Bad Geusern, and again, our Viennese speaker. And let me play this. So let's first uh, be any speaker. So now I, I play you this sample where it, uh, so it has this uh, transition from standard to dialect. Wir sind lustige Leute. 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 And so what the the algorithm is here doing is uh, is really um, automatically making this. It, it just gets the phone labels and and the models, and then we get automatically get this uh, transition. And 
of course, we can also use this algorithm directly on waveforms. So this is also something that we are doing at the moment. So to at the moment we use it for uh, interpolating between different standards like the German standard and Austrian standard and Swiss standard. And I have this other example of the uh, but uh, Innerfeldgarten speaker. Schneelicht im Garten. 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 And you see, yeah, you hear that there are a lot of things actually happily happening there, and it's, uh, yeah, uh, it's done kind of automatically, and. And we also evaluated this then, how it is perceived, uh, that it really has this, uh, yeah, there is some uh, gradual uh, change, but uh, yeah, there are also some uh, categorical perceptions involved. So, and yes, then, uh, we moved on to audiovisual speech synthesis, uh, uh, where we mainly worked on uh, joint modeling. So this was uh, with uh, Dietmar Schabus and, and Gregor Hofer also work. Uh, and yes, the, the idea was uh, basically was uh, how can we model this uh, jointly, the acoustic and the visual data, and, and I can play you, I mean, this is, I mean, here you have to now take into account that really we have uh, limited, ah, so now you can't see it, yeah, we have a, really a limited amount of training data only, and so you need to to have a little bit of uh, fantasy to <laughs> think that it can do it. We could do it better when we have more data. So we have this uh, these uh, facial marker recordings, which we recorded with an OptiTrack system, and then. These markers are then used to, to control the, this head. And it's also, uh, and we also train the, the synthesizer on this uh, data. And, and it's, it's only, let me see, it's only these 300 utterances that we have for training. This is a Beispiel für audiovisuelle Sprachsynthese mit hidden Markov Modellen. Sowohl das akustische Sprachsignal als auch die Gesichtsbewegungen wurden von einem kombiniert audiovisuellen Modell erzeugt. So, yeah, with more data, this would get much better. But, and, and there, there's also some error, of course, from uh, coming from this signal then to the uh, face, also to the 3D rendering. And yeah, and the, the joint modeling was uh, uh, then an extension of this speaker-dependent uh, HMM. And yes, uh, and yeah, something else <laughs> that we also did was the, the singing synthesis. So this was uh, is uh, quite prominent and quite famous in, in, in Japan and also this uh, uh, framework, the SINSI that we used there uh, was also uh, developed there and, and here we have uh, now uh, a different input. Uh, we don't have simple text but we have uh, a musical score and uh, this would be given in a, as a music XML file, so which looks like here. You have the the, the, the note and then also the the syllable that it's uh, associated with it, and yeah, and also 
there needs to be some additional parsing done to find which note is on which syllable. So the, the front end is also different and also the, the features, these linguistic features then also change because you have then linguistic features plus uh, musical features in the, in the input and also in the decision tree you have then uh, a mixture of musical and uh, speech features. And we recorded for this project, we recorded four opera singers in mezzo, bass, sopran and tenor. And, and also, yeah, we recorded like 30 minutes of each, each singer. And this was uh, already quite time consuming. And, and here you see a, a sample signal. So we see the, the fundamental frequency. So we have this uh, quite some vibrato on the signal. And then also here the, uh, the phones and, and here the notes, the musical notes. And for generating the vibrato, we, we generate it from a model. So the model has some, has a frequency and a, an amplitude. And from this, you generate this uh, variant with this sinusoid. And this is then added on the, on top of the, the on top of the F0, this is generated from the HMM. And the HMM cannot uh, generate the vibrato because we only have five states and this is not enough for uh, this fast changing uh, vibrato. And let me just play you the mezzo and the bass, the, the synthesized versions. Again, here is, uh, you also have to take into account that it's really a limited amount of training that we have. Ah, okay, I don't have the bus here, sorry. Yes, uh, I don't have the correct audio here. Uh, yes, uh, maybe I play the original. Uh, yes, I mean, yeah, there's a big difference between uh, the two, but uh, this was also trained in the HMM paradigm, also with a classical vocoder, so probably we can increase the quality with a DNN model also. And then, uh, yeah, the uh, latest work was then uh, the synthesis of Birdsong, uh, uh, also together with uh, Lawrence, who is now also working on the dialect synthesis and uh, other colleagues from the academy. Uh, and there we wanted to synthesize the uh, Bachi songs, but also uh, having a symbolic input uh, so not only like sampling uh, the songs, but having some symbolic input that possibly could also be uh, controlled or a control model for the synthesizer. And, and therefore we, we created a segmentation, an in initial segmentation, and this was then clustered to identify basic 
budgie sounds, which are, yeah, it's phones, it's not phones, <laughs> it's budgie sounds. Uh, and, uh, and then, yeah, we evaluated it and it was for humans, it was not uh, possible to uh, differentiate between the two. And it's really, if I play, it's really difficult. So this is the original one. So this is the synthesized one. So it's, it was a, it's a little bit faster and uh, uh, yeah, as I said, we, we, we only evaluated this uh, with human listeners up to now and let's see <laughs> if uh, the budgies, uh, no, we, we, I, I think we did something with the budgies also, but uh, and there was some indications that uh, they uh, like it. <laughs> okay, this uh, come to my uh, yeah almost last slide. So I think some um, questions um, arise because yeah we have uh, so as you heard probably the the quality of. Uh, of the synthesizers is getting better and better and 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 also the applications that we can uh, realize so we can ask if we should clone the voices of uh, deceased persons so yeah and i mean for the for an actor that is uh, well known or still well known there's maybe some interest to have uh, this voice but uh, what about uh, yeah anyone uh, everyone and then of course always the the question is uh, still relevant and 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 becoming more and more relevant who owns the data because uh, yeah this everything uh, relies on machine learning and the data and we really can do a lot with it uh, and then also for speech synthesis, which stereotypes are generated. So actually, with our work, when we did the work with the on the dialects, of course we wanted to have more uh, realistic voices, more voices like they are really spoken, and not just simply uh, always the the standard, the same standard that is used uh, for synthesis because it's simpler just. Uh, and then I think the, the debiasing is also uh, something that is uh, kind of interesting in, in synthesis because in, in NLP we have these uh, approaches that we want to debias the model so to, to make it uh, less biased to the uh, things that it learns from the uh, from the training data but what does this mean in speech synthesis so is this then the debiasing is then the standard voice but the standard voice is also a kind of uh, stereotype if you always create the standard voice or is it then some kind of of average voice or very robotic voice so this is not so easy i think to answer Okay, then I come to my conclusions. Uh, yes, I, I hope uh, you saw that uh, the DNM-based synthesis can improve the quality significantly, even uh, yeah, uh, when we have comparable training data and not 
I mean, we didn't for these models. Okay, we had of course several hours of training data, but we didn't have an extreme amount of training data. And and then we also can have reasonable quality synthesis from audiobook data, where yeah we cannot uh, very well control uh, the uh, phonetic content. And then also uh, the acoustic interpolation is uh, possible to create these intermediate uh, varieties and also produce uh, some more realistic speech varieties. And, and also in visual modeling, we can use this joint modeling uh, And yes, the, the singing synthesis, mainly uh, we showed that this vibrato modeling can improve the, the mezzo voice and the bass voice. So the bass voice I couldn't uh, play, unfortunately. And, and also this uh, HMM-based synthesis and also the source filter modeling can be applied uh, for bird songs also. And yes, but also the increased quality and also the possible applications lead to some ethical questions concerning the usage of speech synthesis, speech technology. Okay, this was my presentation. Thank you for your attention. <laughs>